More than 100 years later, the religion that Felix Sadler started is headquartered in New York at the American Ethical Union. Natalie Koritz is the archivist. The young men who supported Adler and called him back to start an ethical culture movement were young men formed in a union called the Union for the Higher Life, and most of these people came from uh, Temple Emanuel. They began to see that uh, Adler's ideas of a religion of ethics was a possibility, and they too became uh, uh, convinced and dedicated to this idea of a religion of ethics. The essential preoccupation of those who started the ethical movement was to defend and to rescue the human spirit. Uh, they were part of their time, which was the uh, second part of the, of the 19th century, and obviously you had uh, problems, social problems, that were crying out for a reassertion of the worth of the person. The insight that Adler and his early colleagues, as well as his early members, brought to the ethical question was a practical insight. Uh, they set forth an agenda. And their agenda was based on their reading, not just of the world around them, but of what they predicted the world around them was going to become. Among the issues they identified very early on, therefore, were the rights of women and children, uh, clearly rights that still remain a problem today, and clearly issues that still remain a problem today. A second issue had to do with the rights of labor and the nature of labor in an industrial society. And a third had to do with how religion itself was developing uh, and how it was to take its place in the complexities of modern industrial cultures and they set themselves the task of working these out concretely in experience. This is Algernon D. Black, leader emeritus of the New York Society for Ethical Culture. The following is a quote from the index of the Free Religious Association in 1878. Quote, the secret of Dr. Arda's remarkable success is not fully explained by devotion to youth and righteousness. It lies even more in his faith in organization, his executive ability, his controlling purpose is found and to found also institutions that shall outlast his own individual exertions. Workers are no less needed than thinkers and it is the phenomenal combination of both qualities in Adler that made him a great success where so many others had failed. A success not likely to be ephemeral. The saying that we have in the ethical movement, which to me is the most inspiring, is also the one perhaps which is the most commonplace, which is act so as to elicit the best in others and thereby in yourself. And the reason I do find that so instructive is because it is a, uh, an aphorism that's applicable to both personal relations as well as the larger relations with the world. And as we live in a world that is increasingly small, in which the fate of people everywhere affects the fate of others elsewhere, that is something that I believe is uh, helpful to all of us to keep in mind. What we do does affect others, and the way in which we interact with others also determines our own character. As we move closer to the 20th, 21st century uh, and into the second century of the American Ethical Union, I'd have to say that the most important value which ethical culture puts forward is the value which, is, which it is always promoted as central, and that is a commitment to the indwelling dignity or worth of the human being. I think that anyone who takes the briefest look around at American society and beyond to uh, the international community 
has to come to the conclusion that we live in a world which degrades the dignity of human beings at every turn. It's the particular mission of ethical culture to try to create a world in which the essential worth of the person will, will be respected everywhere and where the dignity of the human being, of every man, woman, and child, will be respected. Think about the ideas of the movement of ethical culture and what it's meant. I think one of the very unique things about it has been its emphasis on the individual, and yet along with that, a kind of broadening into a concept of the importance of group ethics so that one thinks both about how do we respond to the dignity and the worth of each individual, and yet how do we build some kind of cohesive group ethic where we manage to both value the individual and yet recognize the importance of the group decision-making and a community-building kind of mentality. I think Adler's uh, idea of the moral ideal is important, very important for us today to hold up an ideal uh, either in person or as an idea is something that we can strive for, that we continually uh, struggle for in our individual lives and in our lives in the society. Um, to become a, a kind person, to become a just person, to strive to become a more responsible person. And to have these um, heroes and heroines held up to us I think is so important for our children today, especially um, since many of their learning hours uh, are spent in front of a, a television, it seems uh, pretty remote to their own individual active life. Culture, um, ethics comes first. It um, is the ethical experience that is the foundational human and humanizing experience. And I think uh, that the idea of ethics as a religion is a very exciting and new way of forming community. Asking what Adler still has to say to us today. And in particular, he has to say that moral experience is a clue to the ultimate reality of the universe as human beings can understand it. And whatever our social action programs, whatever our community building, I feel that it is an idea of that kind, expanded, intensified, looked at from different angles that will give us something very special as our marching orders for our next hundred years. Of reading the message that Albert Einstein had sent to the New York Society for Ethical Culture, in which he said the essence of religion is ethics. When you strip away the superstition and the dogmatism, what you have left is ethics. That's the greatest idea in the world. Uh, Adler was certainly completely right that we really grow and develop only in our relationship with others. And uh, when we get engaged in projects and, and uh, causes that we are concerned about, we become better people, not just because of our dedication to the project, but because we share with others, we learn from others, we correct our mistakes by listening to others and their reaction to us. The, uh, uh, the ethical values and the, and the world that people can make for themselves is uh, the most important issue to which we can devote ourselves. I believe, I guess there's a kind of a faith in that, in that we are uh, uh, basically optimistic uh, and believe in, uh, in progress when we say ethics is a religion. The ethics is basically a commitment to man's highest ideal, to perfection and absolute fulfillment of what man could possibly do. And ethical culture is the way you can achieve that. I feel it reflects a, a basic belief in people that people are good, that they have a goodness in them that doesn't come from belief in some god or supreme being, but the good is here. And given the opportunity in the right climate almost, that they'll be good. I feel that every, every individual human being has, has uh, potential for, for uh, being better and for helping others to make this world a better place to live. You hold people as the highest and have a, have a genuine belief in people, which partially requires accepting them as they are, not 
as an ideal. I mean, everybody has ideals here and realities down here, and the frustration is trying to squeeze the two together, which can never be. And when you accept things for what they are in their real state and have the ideal as something you aspire to and you work toward that ideal, then you can accept all people as they are and work with them to bring out the best in them. Religion comes down to what you believe and what, how you show that belief. Uh, for traditional religions, you might uh, believe in a God and you might show that belief by going to church and, and worshiping. And ethics as a religion, uh, your beliefs are more in your fellow man. You have to show your beliefs in how you act, how you relate to people, and how you work to make the world a better place to live in. It was very fundamental to me to have uh, a religion that is not uh, committed to some specific way of looking at the hereafter or God, or, uh, but to look at life as it is and how do you move in this life in a fair way with respect to others to contribute and not ask too much what the Lord would do for me, but what one might do for people. The first thing that was done was to establish a free kindergarten. And Felix Adler and some of his friends went out on the street handing out leaflets to people to get children into the free kindergarten. This was the first free kindergarten in New York and in San Francisco. The first class started January 2nd, 1878. They said to themselves, what are the educational needs of people, young people and their parents, and how shall that be responded to? And they did so because it was the feeling of the group that a moral imperative existed in the area of education itself. 1888, he gathered a group of mothers in his New York society for intensive and scientific child study. At this time, psychology was actively opening up in this new field, and Adler thought, sought to join the emotional interest of mothers in their children with better tested intellectual studies. This was the beginning of the Child Study Association. The kindergarten committee visited with the homes of children and acquainted themselves with the needs of the family and distributed such charities as deemed advisable. And the committee also or organized such volunteer services and assistance as was needed from time to time and kept themselves in close touch with the needs of the children, parents and teachers alike. This was probably the beginning of the first PTA. With the laying of the cornerstone for the Midtown School, ethical culture continued to emphasize education. It was believed that a working man's school would bring children off the street and give them a taste for proper care. Education would also prepare them for a meaningful life. The ethical culture school was soon followed by a high school. Later, there were schools at other societies. Education was in all subjects. In addition to teaching children, there were also classes for teachers and teacher training. There were classes for new immigrants. And there were classes in ethics. One of the students was Algernon Black. And the ethics taught, I think, at its best, would not be a thing having to do with discipline and authority and punishment, but more an involvement of the awareness of the child, all through his life maybe, that we all have the same basic human parts that make us part of the human species, but we all are different. 
not only the groupings of people from their background, geography, climate, culture, but also different because everyone is individually a little different from the people he was born to and the way he was brought up. When we look into the past and try to use that as a basis for our work in the future, I would have to say that ethical culture's greatest contribution has been its contribution across the board towards helping to create a world uh, founded on social justice. Um, the, I think ethical culture of all religious groups um, has been the one most uncompromising in the notion that the fulfillment of the individual self comes from working to create a better world. The example would be in 1877, the New, uh, New York Society founded the District Nurse Service, which later grew into the Visiting Nurse Association. What was noteworthy about that achievement was it was the first time that there was a direct social service agency that was not tied to missionary work for a particular religious institution. Uh, subsequently, I, we were involved in, in other things that extended this idea, the idea of, of religion without God. Uh, I would point to things like our leading the fight to recognize the right of people to, to be conscientious objectors to military service without belief in a supreme being which we did in the Seeger case in the late 1960s. I think back about the history of the ethical movement, the project which I find most inspiring are the settlement houses. It's because there we had the interaction between those who were better off with those who were most in need. And it wasn't done as an act of charity, but in fact the people who were involved in these settlement houses, such as John Love, Lovejoy Elliott and others, uh, that there was actually living together, the constant interaction, where the people had day-to-day -day contact with one another in which they shared their, their fate together. That also, to me, is something that makes a great deal of sense in an increasingly small world. The question for settlement houses was not, as it is today, one of providing social services to a client population but much more the democratic question, how do you empower a client, a population that is not a bunch of clients? How do you empower them to control and enrich their own lives? That was essentially the goal of the Settlement House Movement. It was a, a democratic goal. Uh, the original idea was meeting with Dr. Felix Adler, who was lecturing at Cornell. And Dr. Elliott was a student. And he loved what Dr. Adler said about life and uh, of people helping themselves and each other. And when he graduated, he said, I'd like to follow in the footsteps of, of Dr. Felix Adler. And he went to Dr. Felix Adler and he said, I would like to uh, find a career for myself. And uh, how do I go about it? He said, John, you go out into the world and you'll see you'll find something that will direct you towards your aim in life. He came to the west side and he saw the conditions, the poverty, the cold water flats, no baths, toilets in the hall, toilets in the yard, drunkenness. He saw child abuse, wife abuse, and the conditions were terrible. And he went back to Dr. Adler and he said, Dr. Adler, I have found an area that needs help. They need a better quality of life. They have to be exposed to finer things than just the drudgery of poverty and uh, ignorance. And Dr. Adler was very smart. He first he got the children who were playing in the streets and they were shooting craps and they were making mischief and so forth and so on. 
And he went over to a group and he said, how would you boys like to go into a store and have your own club? Yeah, mister, we'd like that, we'd like that. And Dr. Elliot bought boxing gloves and he started little boxing matches. Also, uh, he bought roller skates. So they had races and roller skates in the street. Now, the, uh, the, the parents were saying, what is this man doing? He's doing a good thing, but why is he doing this? Uh, spending his money on uh, children he doesn't even know. So the fathers came around and Dr. Elliot, with his wonderful sense of friendship, said, I'm doing this because it's making children happy. And I'd, I'd like to have you fathers have a club. And the fathers came and they had a club. And they called them the Juntos. Junto is a Spanish word which is pronounced junto. Junto means together. So that was the Junto club, the together club. Then he started, he said, now it'd be nice to have your wives come. Now, some of these families didn't know English. But we had a wonderful lady, Miss Bromley. Miss Bromley started a mother's club. And they had a bunch of mothers, and they didn't have the language, which was a common thing, but they had a wonderful common thing, which was food. So you had an Italian mother, an Irish mother, a Greek mother, and once a week they would meet, and it would be Irish night, and they'd make corned beef and cabbage. The next week it would be, uh, uh, spaghetti and meatballs and so forth. So that was the the group starting together of whole families and when Dr. Wally got the money from the Ethical Culture Society they started Hudson Guild. And the Hudson Guild was a mixture of many things. It was exposed to uh, a recreation place. Not only that, <clears throat> they needed help because there was high tuberculosis in the neighborhood. So they had a, a clinic set up. <clears throat> they had a dental clinic. They had a doctor available. They also had uh, the recreation things and also the educational things through libraries and also exposure to the being available to go to the country. And that was a big, big deal. And because of the country, two weeks, they got money, and through that money, they bought Hudson Gill Farm. And Hudson Gill Farm is a place where we used to go for two weeks, and then uh, it had a place for children's camp, teenage camp, and they had families, and now they have senior citizens. And those are the things that make us very happy and very comfortable. Dr. Elliot was born in 1868 in Illinois and educated at Cornell and then in Germany. He used his religious faith in the power in people to help themselves, to make life over, to create Hudson Guild settlement, to make better homes. He struggled against child labor and its destructive qualities. He started with the school for printer's apprentices. It consisted of unemployed men who had lost an interest in learning. And he found an old printer and he got rooms for him and they established the school for printer's apprentices. And then of course it was recognized publicly and the School for Printers Apprentices became part of the New York City public school systems. He dressed simply. He ate simply. He served greatly in every way he could. was 
established by members of ethical culture, and that's how we right. started originally. The, uh, some of the members from ethical culture came down and helped us organize it, and that's going back even before my time. Eventually, they got together at Hudson Guild and they pooled their resources until finally now they got Camp Madison Felicia. If it wasn't for the two weeks that we spent in camp, we wouldn't know what a tree was. This way we come fish. on, come on, come on, and come on, come on. So frogs be swimming in this water. Uh, to me, the most significant idea that uh, has implications for the day is the uh, is the advocacy for child welfare. And uh, as an educator, I've devoted my life to it and my current activities. The uh, AEU Commission on Race and Equality, which um, uh, existed for 25 years until just recently, uh, which I was the first director and initiator, uh, and where we, during the 60s, we ran programs in Alabama seeking to uh, bring about integration of blacks and whites, adults and children, in several of the cities of Alabama, uh, going down there each summer. Working with me were Robert and Anita Stein, uh, who continued the project after I had to withdraw from it in the late 60s. And uh, through this project, uh, we touched the lives of literally thousands of adults and children through uh, integrated play schools, through integrated tutoring programs, integrated adult education, and uh, through bringing uh, black and white children from Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, uh, up north to Putnam County to Camp Madison Felicia which I was also a director for. ...was the encampment for citizenship. There we set up a program led by Al Black, Henry Herman, Nanny Pollitzer, uh, that in effect attempted to show how a response to the crisis of democratic living could be dealt with educationally for young people. The uh, founding of the Weiss Ecology Center that I was one of the founding members I think is very important because we were the first national religious organization to start an ecological center. But I think the desegregation is really the area that we have made our biggest impact in ethical culture. I'm really proud of the fact that the ethical movement has uh, taken a strong role in promoting the very crucial work of Amnesty International, which has now become the world's greatest and largest human rights organization, because in the work of Amnesty, we see the uh, essential foundational commitment to the worth of the individual being translated into a positive uh, political program which promotes human rights everywhere. The Social Service Board is an arm of the New York Society whose mandate is to identify social service needs of the community and to the extent possible, help to meet them. Community can mean the city, the neighborhood, the New York society, or society at large. In recent years, some of our main projects have been a shelter for the homeless, an inner school enrichment program, and a supervised visitation project for children of broken families and their non-custodial parents. I want to tell you about the National Service Conference of the American Ethical Union. Our function is to deal with issues of concern to the ethical movement, mainly on the national level. We work through coalitions because we are small and we must employ our very limited funds in the most efficient way. So we belong to the RCAR, which is the Religious Coalition for Abortion Rights, we are connected with PEARL, which deals with the separation of church and state in education. However, our most important activities deal with the United Nations, 
We represent the ethical movement on the national level by being affiliated with the United Nations. It helps me decide for myself, it sets guidelines instead of me following set rules. A place where I can express my views, people can applaud me for just expressing the views that I, I want to. And, and knowing that you're not alone in the world, that are people like you. We are free to talk about any issue that concerns us. Um, for me, ethical um, humanism is the way you treat somebody. Um, I think everybody should be treated with respect, no matter. There's a feeling of a family, brotherhood, sisterhood, or whatever you want to call it. To make the society a place where people can gather together and celebrate the spirit, celebrate being alive, being human together, focusing on their relationships, and how to make this world just a little bit better. We're an institution that emphasizes the knowledge, the practice, and the love of the right. And therefore, we hope to be a place where people can find a space where there's a freedom for them as they search out who they are and what kind of ethical insights and ideas they want to be committed to. And we seek to be as well a place that gives them the support and the resources to carry out that personal search within a community of people who are also dealing with those kinds of issues. In the phrase, I choose to attribute worth, the most important word is choice. I think that that's what being a modern person is all about, is coming to grips with being a chooser in the world. It's something that fills us with fear and dread, as well as with excitement and a sense of adventure. And I think that part of what ethical culture societies have to do is help members to feel more comfortable about being choosers in their own lives societies is that through our religious education program we bring children uh, into the family of humankind instead of indoctrinating them with one narrow concept of religion and by giving them the sense that they are part of that larger human family they really become the global citizens of tomorrow the planetary citizens of tomorrow which is the best guarantee for peace religious education has always played a major role in the ethical movement the first director of religious education was Florence Kleber. She was the director for a good 10 years and started us off concentrating on how we can teach each other to be moral citizens and ethical activists in the world. She started the Sunday Assembly, it was called then. Today it's called the Sunday School and a youth program. She developed many pamphlets um, talking about the questions that all children have. How can I know what to believe about God? How can I know what to believe about religion? How can I know what to believe about people? And how can I know where my belief system is? And as I change and grow and experience more in life, how can I put it all together? Religious education in the ethical movement is lifespan education. We have Sunday schools for children. We have a youth program for our young teenagers, 13 through 18. We have adult education courses for the adults, and we are working towards a senior adult education programming. We have parents programs. We have family programs. We have intergenerational activities, which all bring us together as, as family in the society itself. Uh, last Sunday we had a spring festival at our society. We had a group of people who ranged in age from, I would say, about six months to maybe in their 90s. We got together and put in an, on an impromptu play based on an, a Native American folk tale. It was um, lots of fun. We meant to just have fun, to develop community, and to interact in a different way. It was a good chance for some of the older members to get together with our younger children and some of the kids to get to know some of the older people of the society. Several sort of categories of programs. One is educational. One are programs directed at action or service in relation to social issues. And one is our programs that really are related to just being a community, being a village, a little village in the city with aunts and uncles and young children and old people and everyone in between. We also have a ceremonial life at the society. Parents bring their children for naming, 
and we also have coming of age ceremonies for adolescents. When two people decide to share a life of commitment and love together, they come to us for an ethical culture wedding. At the time of death, ethical culture leaders officiate at the funerals or memorial services of our friends and members. For me, ethical culture in particular has, has brought a philosophy and a religion that makes the most sense to me on a feeling level and on an intellectual level. You know, I mean, when there is some sense of there is a, a goal to be strived for, an ethical goal, that gives me the sense that there is some reason to do what we do. I think that it really represents the love that, that we seem to be missing in so many places in the world. That ethics as a religion is a road. I am not finding, like other religions want to find, the truth. I am finding the road by which I can be a better person, be more caring for other people, and uh, the interaction with other people, which is very important to me. So to me, ethics is my religion. I live it every day. I try very, very hard to uh, make sure that I try and work so that to elicit the best in others. And strangely enough, I have grown tremendously in the last couple of years, so it has elicited the best in me also, which is what Felix Adler. All right. And clearly, the movement is not one thing. The obvious insight Adler had in starting this movement back in 1876 uh, was the attempt to focus commitment and personal energy on developing an ethical life, both for oneself, one's he fellow human beings, and the society around us. Uh, that, I think, remains a valid purpose and a valid insight. The point, of course, is that carrying the initial insight of that early day, locate the ethical issue, figure out how you can make a contribution to the development of a better answer to the options posed by that ethical issue, then go to work on it. That insight remains central, and I think the issue today is how one applies it to a more recent agenda than was true 113 years ago. And that takes work. Our ability to be on the forefront, to find those kinds of issues that nobody else is dealing with and to get at them at a level of depth that's not happening otherwise, could be a real key to our being able to continue the movement and to build upon it and to offer a real service to humanity. My belief is that ethical culture is truly the religion of democracy and that we have an idea that more and more people are in tune with if they only knew of our existence. And to me, what we need to do is, is take our message out to the public and make them aware of us. About uh, four years ago, I was asked if I would help organize a society in the Chapel Hill area and I was delighted to do so. Uh, we ran ads for about a month prior to our first meeting and had uh, 40 responses. Of those 40, 25 people met in the living room of uh, one of our members for our first meeting. The society now has 53 members and running a very thriving program. This is living proof of the fact that there are many people interested in our movement and we can start new societies. It was a lesson for the future in all yes. of this. Yes. What would that lesson be? The lesson would be that uh, uh, you take ideas of the past and bring them into the present for use in the future. Uh, out of a fortune cookie, I got this statement. 
that the philosophy of one century is the common sense of the next. Freely do I own to this purpose of reconciliation, and candidly do I confess that it is my dearest object to exalt the present movement above the strife of contending sects and parties and to at once occupy that common ground where we meet, all meet, believers and unbelievers, for purposes in themselves lofty and unquestioned by any. Diversity in the creed, unanimity in the deed. This is that practical religion from which none dissents. This is that platform broad enough and solid enough to receive the worshiper and the infidel. This is that common ground where we may all grasp hands as brothers united in mankind's common cause. Uh -huh.